survival. Targets as fast and as accurately as you can. with that area. Fulton recovery subject confirmed onboard helicopter.
system recovered. Your helicopter is complete. Here he is. Fulton recovery subject confirmed onboard helicopter. Head for the recovery zone. We'll pick you up there. Neutralize that security detail. All of them. 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 Neutralize that security detail. All of them.
neutralize that security detail. All of them. Neutralize that security detail. All of them. Done with that area. Head for the goal. Bad news, Snake. Zdornov's on the loose. What? Again? It's funny. We took away his prosthetic and did a full body check. We even increased the guard. You think he had help? Impossible. Anyway, I'm adding a new mission. Locate and recover Zdornov.
Snake, the doorknobs disappeared from his cell again. Find him. Find the doorknob and bring him back here with Fulton recovery. Freeze. Uh. using Fulton recovery on him. Okay, you're done with that area. Head for the goal.
Captain Recovery Subject confirmed onboard helicopter. Somebody there? Kaz, I caught Zadornov. Impossible. I thought I'd made it. Acknowledged and appreciated. Remember why we created MSF Snake. To provide military force to whoever needs it, wherever they are, regardless of nation or ideology. Our beliefs aren't all that lofty. We just won't be the tools of any one country. Exactly. We know only how to fight. But we refuse to live our lives at the whim of the state. The MSF seal is patterned after Pangaea, the supercontinent from 250 million years ago. Back then, the whole world was one landmass. One world. No gaps, no rifts. Our strength will take us back there. What about you, Kaz? Any interest in expanding MSF? You'd better believe it. I want to make us into an organization that doesn't take orders from any country. Just like you were saying, we have to be strong. Strong enough to defend ourselves. We need money, too. Money to train soldiers to fight. The way I see it, we make MSF into something along the lines of a new kind of business. A contractor providing the full range of military services. Not just combat, but logistics, training, 
weapons, outfitting, and R&D. Combining the small footprint and exceptional performance of special forces with the raw military might of a full regular army. Only with that kind of power can we break free of nation states. What I need from you, boss, is to go out and find guys we can bring back here using Fulton Recovery. Then tell us what assignment to use them for. I'll take care of the rest. Your old mentor, the boss. She was known in the West as the mother of special forces, right? <laughs> Nothing but propaganda. Actually, it's not all that far from the truth. I heard the KGB just set up a counter-sabotage cell. Alpha Group, I think they call it. There's even a rumor that West Germany created a counter-terrorist unit within its border police after the debacle at the Munich Olympics. Back home in the States, they've got the illustrious Green Berets, the Seals, and your personal creation, Foxhound. The seeds sown by the boss are beginning to sprout. Same goes for MSF, right? In creating it, you were carrying on the will of the boss. Yeah. She taught me how to fight the hard way. She beat it into me. And now, thanks to her, we can take on missions other than just conventional combat. After all, we've got the same mother as the Army's special forces. You know, Snake, you're right. As long as we're soldiers without borders, we're going to be a target. We need our own deterrent. Yeah, we're going to be stepping into a lot of different conflicts as we roam the world. Each one unique, and with its own set of geography, ideologies, and politics. If we're going to intervene in those kinds of situations, we need the threat of a Metal Gear. Unless we want to end up like Che Guevara did in Bolivia. Huh, well said. Our army without borders doesn't have a land to call home. We're nomads. Wanderers. What we need now is a sheepdog to guard our flock. Right. Maybe it's not the way the boss would have gone about it. But there are places in this world that need us, and soldiers that need MSF. And as long as we're needed, we'll keep on moving. Ours is a journey that never ends. We're the real Peace Walkers. Strangelove, when did you and the boss first meet? Did she ever tell you about what she saw in space? Yeah. I saw the same thing along with her. The Soviets beat America into space with Sputnik. And so America rushed to be first in manned spaceflight. NASA used her as their top secret guinea pig, launching her deep into the cold blackness of space. I took part in the project as a scientist. You were there with her? Yes. For a brief time. We were one and the same, she and I. We sought each other out, completed each other. Did you know that inside every woman there's a universe? And that we are able to sense this in each other? We connected because of our empathetic female brains. As time went on, I began to have doubts about offering such a noble soul as sacrifice. Why would they... Why did she have to... <sighs> the flight test was a narrow success, and she miraculously made it back alive. But her mind and body were horribly mangled, and there was nothing I could do for her. We were no longer one and the same. She went away, and I, having nothing else to live for, immersed myself in AI research hoping that no one would ever have to make her sacrifice again. I never knew. It's not really worth knowing. We were ships passing in the night, that's all. Perhaps someday I'll tell you the long version, if you're interested.
philosophers were a secret society of power brokers formed in a pact between the U.S., Russia, and China in the early 20th century. Of course, by that time, the American and Soviet branches had already parted ways. But there were those among the remaining Russian philosophers not entirely happy with the one-party communist state. The boss reached out to them. She arranged clandestine meetings in Berlin, hoping to find a way into OKB-1, the Soviet's premier design bureau. She worked tirelessly to win their sympathy, in some instances using huge sums of cash, in others by helping them over the Berlin Wall. It was a dangerous game to be playing. The philosophers had everything on her, and not just information either. She'd given birth to a child on the battlefield, only to have them immediately snatch it away. I know she told you that story. If that child was in the hands of the Soviet philosophers, she'd be putting more than just herself in danger. But she did what she had to do. At the time, the Soviet Union was believed to have an arsenal of missiles far greater than that of the United States. If that proved to be the case, Moscow would be free from the yoke of nuclear deterrence, raising the possibility that the Soviets might actually launch nukes if they felt it necessary. As you know, the so-called missile gap turned out to be a Soviet bluff. Moscow had gone to incredible lengths to perpetuate the lie. In fact, the whole space race was really just a part of an elaborate ruse. Only we didn't know that at the time. <laughs> she used to joke that even she swallowed the whole missile gap story, hook, line, and sinker. She put her life on the line for the sake of her country, to prevent nuclear war. And it was because of her sacrificial efforts that America succeeded in placing a sleeper agent inside OKB-1. NASA began to receive huge volumes of technical data from the Soviet program. By the end of 1959, they'd succeeded in sending a chimpanzee named Sam on a ballistic rocket flight. The rocket never left the atmosphere. But all the same, it was a huge success for NASA, restoring confidence in its technology. Then, just when the operation was starting to produce results, the CIA came calling. You're a war hero, they said. No need for you to dirty your hands with this sort of black ops. We'll take it from here. In effect, they wanted to reap the rewards for themselves. But the boss didn't object. My part is over, she said. I don't care what you do with the data now. It seemed as if NASA was making great strides toward manned spaceflight while the Russians lagged behind. They even got a report from their mole at OKB-1. The safe return of Sam has sent our scientists into a panic, he said. Soon afterward, the Soviet Union sent an animal of its own into space on Sputnik 2. The dog Kudryavka, better known to the world as Laika. But Laika was fated never to return to Earth. The U.S. can recover its spacecraft from the ocean upon re-entry. But the Soviet Union only borders the frozen Arctic. They had to bring their spacecraft down on land. How could they soften the impact enough to bring a living creature back safely? The agent reported that the Soviets hadn't yet found a solution to that problem. The plot to sabotage the Soviet space program seemed to be working, too. First... They tampered with Sputnik 4's re-entry. Then, two months later, one of their rockets exploded on the launch pad. They did manage to send two dogs into orbit aboard Sputnik 5 and return them safely to Earth. But the agent dismissed it as a fluke. Dogs, sure, but humans? They didn't have the technology. Everybody believed it. Everybody was complacent. Everybody the boss. There was something about the Sputnik 5 schematics they were getting that didn't seem right. Some kind of ejection device on the capsule that didn't quite belong. She couldn't figure out the reason why it was there. What was it supposed to eject? NASA shrugged off her concerns. They figured it was probably meant to eject the flight recorder in case of an accident. 
The boss pleaded with them to investigate, but the CIA wasn't having it. They probably thought she was trying to reclaim some of the glory for herself. The boss wouldn't give up. She decided to head to the Soviet Union herself, alone, without any backing from the CIA. By the beginning of the next year, 1961, she'd succeeded in infiltrating OKB-1. That's when she saw the truth for the first time. Thank you. 